so welcome. My name is Caralia, of course. Uh, today I just published a new conversation with Caralia. Well worth listening to that conversation or watching. It's on podcasts, you know, Spotify, Apple, etc., and also on YouTube. It's with Bairav Thomas English, who is a lineage holder within a tantric lineage, and we talk a lot about Kundalini. Um, so watch that. Highly recommend it. I wanted to expound today on one of the things that he and I discuss and go into a bit more detail. One of the things we talk about is how do you know if what's going on is a kundalini awakening? And I get a lot of emails and messages from people saying, I'm having all these symptoms, I'm seeing, you know, lights and I'm, you know, I'm having body trembles and flashes of heat and flashes of cold. Um, I'm feeling energy in my spine. I'm having out of body experiences. I'm having trippy, you know, all of these different phenomena. And there is one really simple test because often what's occurring isn't necessarily kundalini awakening per se but rather prana activation right so prana is life force and we talk about prana we talk about kundalini we talk about prana kundalini shakti shakti kundalini like all of these words it's and someone's like what's the difference between prana and and kundalini it's kind of similar from what's the difference between an ocean and a river they're both forms of water but they kind of take a different shape to a degree so prana is life force you know and the same way that kundalini is life force however i mean the word kundalini comes from the tantric lineages it was first mentioned in a tantric text around the seventh century and if we are to be very specific and say it is a tantric term so therefore all that we can possibly know about kundalini must come from the tantras right the tantric texts and that is where we discover what it's all about right so are you experiencing kundalini awakening when i can't tell you for sure but one of the litmus tests is has your perception of reality and or yourself shifted changed whether temporarily or maybe it feels like it's permanently has your perception of reality your view of reality changed because if it hasn't changed at least temporarily then what you're experiencing is probably prana activation right and that's not lesser it, it, you know it, it's not even like when people ask me that question am i experiencing kundalini waking i'm like that isn't even the question to be asking it's almost irrelevant it doesn't really matter the real question is what's your relationship what's your desire when it comes to awakening liberation and if you're like yeah i want to wake up yes i'm on the spiritual path well what does that mean to you if you are on the spiritual path what's the goal what's the fruits what are you moving toward and if you're like oh awakening it's like well what does that mean right recognizing that different lineages and different paths have different definitions of what it means to be awake so if you're like, oh, I'm moving towards awakening, then the question is, well, what path, what lineage, what texts are you working with? Because otherwise, how do you know what you're aiming for? And if you don't know what you're aiming for, how do you know how to get there? What practices are you working with, right? And so, you know, from that perspective, whether you've had a Kundalini awakening or not, it kind of doesn't really matter. It, it, it doesn't really matter, you know. Um, you know, for me, for me why I became so dedicated on this path is that this happening this opening unfolded where all of a sudden my perception of reality and self was radically different and it was like and then and then <laughs> I went back into ordinary reality ordinary perception you could say but that opening had occurred so now I had comparisons like whoa this is what reality could be like could feel like right uh, it was like I knew myself as essence nature I dropped into Buddha mind like whatever term you use to describe it but then all of the conditioning all of the filters all of the samskaras and karmic it all came back on and all of a sudden I was in constricted conditioned mind view again but the difference was I knew there was another way to perceive reality and that for me was when the really dedicated hard work began to support the purification process of digesting all the samskaras 
dissolving all the V culpas, right? The beliefs, the mindset stuff, uh, resolving all of the karma. And that has required so much practice, so much practice. And it has revolved involved organizing my life around the spiritual path, being 100% dedicated to the spiritual path. That is what comes first, that, you know? And so if a job was interfering with my ability to show up to the spiritual path, I would get a different job, like literally, because the spiritual path was the most important thing. So if you're experiencing all kinds of phenomena and you're like, oh my God, what's happening? One of the reasons that you're like, oh, is it Kundalini awakening? Is it not Kundalini awakening? Is because you want to know what to do. Because you're in the unknown, the uncertainty, all of a sudden, life as you know it, reality as you know it, you as you know it, has become different, right? And so this is the point where, for me, I had an intuitive sense that the path of yoga was the way. So I dedicated myself to the path of yoga, to doing yoga practice, and then through that, I discovered tantric yoga, right? So classical yoga is different, right? The fruits and the practices and the approach, the worldview even, is different from the path of traditional tantra. Classical yoga is an, an ascending path, whereas traditional tantra is an embodied liberation path, you see? And so it is so, so, so important that you have an alignment of what is called view teachings, right? The path, the lineage that you're walking, view teachings, practices, the practices that you're doing, and fruit or the goal, like what you're aiming towards. If those things don't line up, right? If you're aiming towards a particular uh, fruit, but the, the worldview that you're operating under doesn't align, doesn't align with that or work towards that, it, it just, it won't happen. And given that, Kundalini is a tantric phrase. It's first mentioned in a 7th century text, a 7th century tantra is the first time that we hear of this Kundalini thing, right? And then it's mentioned again, I think, in a 9th century and in a 10th century text. So the phrase itself comes from the tantric lineages. So if you're, if you're feeling drawn toward it, as if you feel as if you might be having a, tan, a kundalini awakening, then it makes sense to at least investigate the tantric lineages. And we're talking traditional tantra here, not neo-tantra, traditional tantra, right? You know it's traditional tantra because all the teachings and all of the practices arise out of a tantric text, like, for example, the Recognition Sutras, okay? If it's not coming from a traditional tantric text, it's not traditional tantra you see and so at least investigate that because if you're looking for certainty if you're looking to know where you are on this map of awakening there's so many frameworks there's so many practices there's so many teachings within traditional tantra that will support you along the way and maybe that's not your jam maybe there's another path maybe it's buddhism you know, and a lot of, the, of Buddhism is actually Tantric Buddhism, because this is a very interesting thing about Tantra, is that Tantra is a way of perceiving reality in order to support the path of awakening and liberation, which then means that any spiritual path, like Buddhism, for example, can have a Tantric lens on it, so you can be walking the path of Buddhism through a Tantric lens. And so now we have Tantric Buddhism, Tantric Sufism. You could probably have Tantric Christianity, right? This, this can happen. Okay, so are you having a Kundalini awakening? Does it even matter? What is your desire when it comes to the path? Do you desire to awaken and liberate? And if you do desire, if you're clear on that, yes, my desire is to awaken and liberate, then what is going to support that process of awakening and liberation? Because if you're also experiencing mental health challenges, maybe what's going to support you on the awakening and liberation is really good somatic therapy, really good somatic therapy, a really good grounded, knowledgeable uh, somatic tantric yoga teacher, right? Um, really good dietary support, exercise support, very uh, start you know working with all of your relationships like there's so many different elements you see so
I mean, you found your way here. You found your way here. And I trust that something in this video will provide you with something that you need. Maybe a little seed dropped in. But just remember the path is actually always internal. And remember that the path involves getting really comfortable with fear, with uncertainty, with the unknown, and being able to embrace and meet all of our emotional experiences. Right? It's about building the capacity to do that to be able to devour, digest, and dissolve samskaras, unresolved emotional trauma. Alrighty, my name's Karalia. Um, drop a comment down below if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer questions in future videos. Um, yeah, and just blessings on the goddess. Blessings on the goddess. Blessings on the goddess. May all beings, may all beings be free. Yeah.